Well, we have a blog server running on our DigitOcean droplet, but it's on port 80, which means when we when we come to this, we see this nasty, uh, it is you're you're not uh, secure, which is not not great. Um, more and more, uh, more and more of like the web scrapers for any of like the the Googles or the I don't know who who else. Who else uses uh, search engines uh, like Bing um, are requiring HTTPS to really give you good um, uh, search engine results. So let's go ahead and set that up because every site really should have a search engine, especially since there's tools like Let's Encrypt out here that give us free SSL certificates. And uh, it's not really all that hard for us to set up, especially since we're on DigitalOcean and we have full access to the system. So let's go ahead and uh, and get something running for ourselves. Um, so we just come to Let's Encrypt. Uh, we're going to click Get Started for this. Uh, and then notice that it's going to like ask lots of questions about what we need to do. I'm going to sort of like run through this. If you're doing this on your site and you don't have your own VPS, then you're going to have to follow some other system. Hopefully there's some automated tool that gives you access. But since this tutorial is all about uh, DigitalOcean and setting up with your own VPS, we're just going to go straight to there. So with shell access, we're going to use a tool called CertBot. So that's going to head into there. We're now on CertBot's website. So we're just going to switch over to, OK, my HP website is running. All right, we're going to be running Nginx on Ubuntu 20. So then it's going to say, OK, what do we need? Well, we need comfort with the command line. We have that. Don't don't worry. Uh, and we also need an HTTP website that's already online uh, running on port 80. Well, we have that right here. So here's our test blog. If I hit uh, enter again, even like a hard refresh, it's still up and running, which is hosted on a server, which we can access via SSH with the ability to sudo. Perfect. Now, I don't need a wildcard cert, so I'm not going to worry about that. A wildcard cert is basically saying, OK, any like subdomains, uh, I want like one cert that covers them all. I just want to cert for this specific subdomain, it's going to be fine. All right, so we're going to come here, make sure that we're on the default tab. And uh, we are going to be installing this via snap. I know a lot of people don't want to be able to like to do that. But um, snap actually for something like this is really good. And it works really well, uh, at least for for this type of thing. And that's because this has the most recent update version of CertBot. OK, so first SSH into the server. I'm going to move this over to the right so we can just follow the instructions here. And here we are. We are SSH'd in. Uh, install SnapD. OK, so if SnapD is not already installed, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and check it. Um, ensure that our version of SnapD is up to date. Let's try this sudo snap install core. If, if these commands don't work, then we don't have SnapD. So run that. SnapD is is already set up, so we're we're good. Remove CertBot auto and any CertBot OS packages. So if we've installed it via any other service, uh, then we need to like make sure to remove that. Uh, I don't think we have. However, if we did, it would have been through apt. Uh, there's no harm in trying to run this. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this. And it's going to say, hey, we didn't install CertBot via apt. Therefore, we are good to go. OK, then it's time to install CertBot. All right, so sudo snap install this classic CertBot. Uh, we're going to go ahead and install it via the snap. Uh, now, the reason why we're doing it from snap is because they do update the snap version of CertBot more often than, well, than apt which does mean that we're going to get the latest versions and uh, it's going to be easier and nicer for us to use. All right, so that's installed for us. Now we have to choose how we want to run this. Uh, I just want it to just do everything for us. So we're going to say uh, sudo cert, uh, certbot dash dash nginx. It is going to be updating our nginx uh, files for us automatically. So there we go. It's going to ask us some questions here. 
Uh, okay, so it's where it's, it's going to save the debug log to. Okay, so enter the email address. Um, what do I want to use for this? Well, I have an email address that I use for, you know, all of my uh, this entire books builds thing. So it's um, okay. Uh, read the terms of service. I have previously read them, uh, so I'm not going to read them on screen here, but I do highly recommend you, you take a look at them yourself. Uh, do I agree? Yes. Would I be willing to, uh, once my first certificate is successfully issued to share my email address with them? Uh, I mean, I've done that before previous times, so I'll just say no this time, but like they, they have my, my, my email address and I get emails from them. Um, okay. Which names would you like to activate? So notice that it's actually looked at my sites enabled and seen that I have these other blog and test blogs. Uh, which ones do I want? Uh, select the appropriate number separated by commas and or spaces, which means I can do both of them here. So I'm just gonna say one comma two, and both of them are gonna get SSH certificates. Okay, so it's gonna request a certificate for both of these blogs. Okay, it's it's done that successfully. And there, there it goes. I have successfully enabled HTTPS. Let's head over here and take a look at what this is. So we notice we still have on other blog this, um, uh, the lock, I hit refresh, and now we have the lock enabled here. And if we go and take a look at that, our connection is secure. Uh, we can actually go and it's verified by Let's Encrypt. We can, in fact, even investigate this, uh, uh, this um, uh, certificate to see like, okay, what version is it being encrypted by? TLS 1.3, which is actually surprising because so few sites actually uh, support 1.3, but this one does. Um, you can view the certificate completely and see when it's uh, going to stop being uh, valid. And we see that this is going to be, it's no longer valid after Saturday, December 4th, 2021. Now that may seem like it's not very long from now. That's what, like three months, 90 days or so? That's, uh, that's actually a core feature of Let's Encrypt very short-lived certificates. Uh, the reason for that, I mean, there's several reasons for that. First of all, they don't have to be a, uh, an authorizer for certificates that just don't, don't aren't needed anymore. Uh, but other than, you know, the other thing is it actually is more, more secure. You need to like re-enable and that ensures, hey, you really are still who you are. Uh, let's come over to our other blog here, hit refresh, and here you are with HTTP HTTPS for this blog as well. Now, notice that even if I try to go to HTTP, it switches me over to HTTPS. So what exactly did they do to like sort of force that? If we head back to Nginx sites uh, available, and let's take a look at our test blog, uh, they've added some things into in here uh, for us. So for example, we have this listen, uh, 443. Um, notice here that we have two server groupings now. We have uh, the original one we had, but they've kind of made just sort of like some changes to everything. Uh, for example, if we come to port 80 and we're on this test blog domain name, then it's going to return a 301, which is a redirect. And they're going to tell me to go or to tell the browser now go to the same URL, but add an HTTP, HTTPS to the beginning. That is what causes us to try to go to HTTP, HTTP and it forces you to HTTPS. And that's perfectly fine. We, we want to like keep that. Also, there's a bunch of these comments now saying managed by a cert bot. So when we go and have cert bot renew this in the future, in you know December, then uh, it's going to basically just, you know, update the PEM files. It shouldn't need to like update the Nginx anymore unless some of those PEM files change for some reason. Uh, or at least the names the PEM file changes. And uh, that's it. In not very much time, we enabled SSH or SSH, no, uh, TLS on our websites. So that way we can get HTTPS access to them. 
So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.